Well, here in my hand, I have what is probably the most widely misunderstood device that's ever found in an engine bay of an automobile. This is an automotive thermostat. It's just a little guy here. But from the things I ever read and see on the internet in different places, different forums and stuff like that, it's pretty obvious that people don't really understand what these things do and how they work. So I thought it would take some time today to explain that and maybe straighten out some of the mythology and the conjecture and the falsehoods and the misunderstanding about what an automobile thermostat does, how it functions, what its purpose is. So that you can get away from some of this misinformation that's out here. So this is your basic garden variety thermostat. It's just a metal disc. It has a little spring on it here and then it has this piece in the middle that's the part that's spring loaded it moves up and down and when it's closed this is mounted in on like this car it's mounted right here in the top of the cylinder head and it's usually always in the outlet to the radiator so that hot water is behind it gets heated up when the engine heats up it's warming up and this thing has a little copper pellet here that uh, when it reaches its opening temperature, which on this one is 180 degrees, it will open up, start to open up, and when it opens up, it permits coolant to flow. You can see a little crack in there if you were to uh, look at it closely. It's kind of hard to do on camera, but uh, this one's made by Motorrad. I don't know where Motorrad is located these days. I don't know if it's here in the States or where, but... This is a cheap oil. This came out. It didn't come out of this car. It came out of that blue Chrysler I have. And there wasn't anything wrong with this. I've tested this thermostat, and it's fine. But I was having other problems with that car. It turned out I've been working on the cooling system off and on, and it turned out that my problems were elsewhere with it. So we're still kind of dealing with that. But uh, I bought another kind of thermostat, kind of a more expensive better built thermostat than this one just to be sure that that was not causing a problem. What I thought the problem was is my gauge was giving some erratic readings and I thought possibly the thermostat was hanging open but it was not. It was functioning perfectly. So anyway I thought this would be a good teaching tool here to use. So what happens is the way this thing works is when you start your engine and it warms up and it reaches uh, what they say you call operating temperature, but it say it gets to close to 180 degrees. Normally it's before 180. If you have a 180 degree thermostat, from my observations, they start to open about 170. They start to open. That means this thing doesn't just pop open at once. It just starts, it opens a little and further and further and further and further, further and opens up. And then by 180 degrees, it's intended that it's fully open permit coolant to flow so where the misunderstanding is and the misinformation and the conjecture and the flat out being wrong about it is coming in is that people when they have cooling systems especially when they're in an old car like this this car is 52 years old it's got the indestructible slant six in it and you know this, this engine is so indestructible that most people figure you don't even need to run cool in it. don't need anything in it. Just leave the water out of it. But I put water in it just for fun, just for the heck of it. No, that's not true. I, you know, I don't run water in it. But, um, but people have old cars, especially older vehicles. They start to have overheating problems, and you get, they'll get online. Sometimes they'll get on just a generic form someplace, or they'll get on a dedicated forum for whatever kind of car or truck they may have and they'll ask questions about why is the car starting to run warm and especially like Mopars and things like that uh, enthusiast forums I'm on you know people try to help them out and there will always be what I call the 160 degree thermostat guy show up he's the one that just pops in and puts his his only contribution is he says 
he usually won't even put I in front of it. He'll, he'll just start his sentence. He'll say, put in 160-degree thermostat, problem solved. And he's gone. He's out of there. He's done his part. <laughs> but I've seen it many times people will say, when somebody starts to have an overheating problem, they start to ask, what thermostat do you have in there? It never fails. Never fails to ask that. And they'll respond, and then it gets down, goes off on this tangent about thermostats. So let's 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 try to learn about this. You have different parts of a cooling system. You have you have a radiator, you have a fan, you have a water pump, you have a thermostat. Every part of this cooling system has a specific job. They do not overlap. Okay. So where the misinformation is coming in is you have these people that will start saying, well. You might need to install a cooler thermostat. No, okay? No, that's not. If you have an engine, say, say this engine normally would run at about 185 degrees, and that's where it runs. You know, when it sits and idles, it warms up because it's got a small fan on it and a small radiator. That's just the way Chrysler equipped it. But when you get moving down the road, it starts to cool right back down, and at speed, it runs about 180 degrees. So if you had something like this, and you had the problem we got some clouds in the background there like I'm having my blue car that it won't stay cool at highway speeds in other words your temperature gauge starts going you know up 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 the further you go you slow down it starts to come finally starts to come back down a little bit then you know if you ever have that problem I've had that many times it's always a capacity problem with your radiator when you're it just simply means that you know, the radiator's job is, it has one job only. Please understand this. It has one job, and that is to convert energy, heat energy, that's in from the engine combustion, from the engine running and under load, from the water that's being carried through the radiator. It's, it's to shed that heat out into the air. And by 60 miles an hour, it's by ram air. It goes right through the grill, through the radiator. It's gone out from under the engine compartment. It's gone. It pulls the heat out of the radiator, so say you have 200 degree, which it shouldn't be that hot, but say you had 108, we'll say 185 degree water coming out of the cylinder head into the radiator, goes through it, comes out at about 135, 140 degrees, ideally, and then it's got capacity to pull heat back from the engine. So that's how this works. That's what your radiator's job is only. So where people get mixed up about this, and they start telling people the wrong thing is they say they start to believe that the thermostat somehow controls the upper end of the temperature control like 180, 190, 200 degrees, 210, 220, 250 and that's not correct. That's not ever been correct as long as they've ever put thermostats in an engine, ever. Because the thermostat's job, the only job this thermostat has ever is if it's a 180 degree thermostat then its job is to maintain a minimum of 180 degrees in this engine at all times. It's just simply a valve, okay? That's all this is. It's a valve. It's not magic. And so it sits in here. So, so say this engine, say we were running this engine in zero degrees Fahrenheit temperature, which it never gets that cold down here in the south, but say we did somewhere else, okay? So... What would happen is this thing, it would be so cold out, the ambient air would be so cold, and the engine probably would not, you know, it would be hard for it to warm up. You guys that live up way up north like that, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you even have to put cardboard in front of your radiators to keep the thing warmed up enough. They just, you know, it's that efficient in that kind of cold air. So what would happen is this thing is simply... This little thing on the back of it, it just, it's either either yes or no. It's either up to 180 degrees and it starts to open up, or it's open by 180 degrees, or it's not. If the coolant is 160 degrees, 150 degrees, it's not going to open. So its job is to keep the coolant from flowing into the radiator until it gets to 180 degrees or 192 degrees, whatever the thermostat's rated for. 190, whatever, doesn't matter. That's its only job. But yet, so many people... So many people spread this information about saying that if you have an overheating engine, you need to put a cooler thermostat in. So I'd like you to explain to me how would that work. If this thing's job, which we know its job is only to keep the engine at a minimum temperature, 
What in the world would that have to do with an overheating engine? Nothing. It doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just people that are not educated enough to know how this works. And I'm not trying to be condescending, but it's just a fact of life. They don't understand or don't want to understand how a thermostat operates, why it's there, and it's simple, single purpose. Okay? So let's get away from that. If you have an engine, you have a car like that blue one that's been running about 208, 210 degrees at 60 miles an hour, which is too hot, it should never do that. With everything being in good shape besides possibly the radiator, which we'll talk about maybe in another video now, but everything else would consider to be good, you should never do that. So let's, let's think about this. Say this car did that. If this car was running, if it was really hot out, Still been really cold out, really hot out, and this car was working hard. It was pulling a hill, you know, somewhere. This little slant six is just working its guts out to get it up a mountain, and this thing is, you know, it's by, probably on the edge of what this radiator and fan combination. Say we're going 40 miles an hour, not much airflow. So, say the temperature, the coolant temperature coming out of that engine head, the head of that engine right there at the house and where the thermostat is, is 200 degrees. That thermostat, being a 180 degree thermostat, is going to be wide open. It's never going to close. It's never going to do, it has nothing to do with that. Okay? It's never, ever going to close. It's never going to even think about closing up and restricting any kind of coolant flow until the coolant drops below about 180 degrees. And I tested this theory. First time I'd ever done it was not that long ago. <laughs> Keep your jokes to yourself. But uh, I put this thing in a a pot of water on the stove and put a candy thermometer in it, watched the candy thermometer. Had one of those nice ones that got the gauge, sort of like a car gauge. And I watched it. And sure enough, about 168 degrees, this thing starts to crack open. And it cracks open, opens, opens, opens. By 180, it's open. And it never, as long as that water stayed above 180 degrees, if I could, when I got the stove set to be about 190, this thing was always open. Okay? That's the way it works. So this, this thing about this, this falsehood, this misconception about the, the, that a 180 degree thermostat or a 192 degree thermostat is causing an engine to run 200 degrees or 215 or whatever it's doing, that's not correct. That's not right. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't matter what you say. That's, it's not right. That's not the way a thermostat works. And you always get into one of these forums like I've been tell, telling you about, and people they don't want to hear that. You know, they want an easy fix. They want somebody to say, oh, you just put a hunt like, like the 160 degree thermostat guy. Once he shows up, he's dispensed his statement. That'll fix it. He won't fix it. He won't fix it because I've seen numerous people say the same thing. Well, I put in a 160 degree thermostat and it didn't do anything. No, it's not going to do anything. You have to have an understanding. You have to try hard to have an understanding of how your cooling system operates, what everything does. The radiator and the thermostat are two parts of that system, and they do vastly different jobs which do not overlap, okay? Let's put that to bed. They do not overlap. The, the thermostat's job, once again, is to keep your engine, or attempt to keep your engine at a minimum operating temperature, 180 degrees, 160. You know, if we were in Alaska, we'd probably be running a 192 degree thermostat in this thing try to keep the engine temperature up when it got really, really cold out there. Just so that, you know, just to help along. So that means that if this if this engine ran so cool up there, I'm gonna repeat myself, that it never got to 180 degrees or it never got to 192 degrees, the thermostat never opened. It wouldn't burn it up because it just it's shedding its heat through the engine block. You know, once it got warm enough, past 180 degrees or 190, whatever, the thermostat would start to open, it would start to send coolant through the radiator, and that's 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 it. That's it that's its job. It has nothing, nothing to do with the upper end temperature control. Now, what does have it to do with it? Two things. The radiator is the basically for the most part, everything stops and starts as far as your high temperature control side goes, like you know, cruising speed under load. Your radiator dictates your engine's staying cool on the upper end, so, you know, 
if you have a good radiator, it should never, if you have an 180 180 degree thermostat, it should be able to keep the engine cool enough to, you know, keep the thermostat open, but it should run about 180, 185, something like that, and never really get hotter. But if you have a small radiator or a radiator that's causing problems, not working very well, then that's when it's going to start to go up, you know, 200, 215. So your problem's in your radiator. It is not in your thermostat. So anyway, I hear a train coming, and it's going to interrupt your video, so I'm going to cut this off now. But just remember that. Let's get away from that. If you come to this video doing a search, I hope this helps you to learn about this. And don't let people tell you differently. Don't let people tell you wrong. You know, do the research on your own and learn about these things. But that's what a thermostat does. It does not help an overheating situation at all. The only thing that will cause, the only way a thermostat will cause an overheating situation is if the thing sticks all the way closed and then you have sudden catastrophic overheating that does not cure itself. I mean, it, the engine overheats right away and it keeps doing it every time until it's dead. <laughs> even a slant six. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching and comment, rate, subscribe if you haven't. See you around.